Dr. Greenlaw is the uh, professor and chief of burn surgery at the Shriners Hospital uh, in Davis, California, or right outside of Sacramento, California. And uh, he is a, a burn surgeon. And we're going, uh, David, welcome to the uh, discussion. And uh, Rob, I hope you're going to stay, stay on for the panel. We're going to have a discussion, so don't go too far away, please. Uh, but Dr. Greenlaw, are you with us? Dr. Greenlaw? So I, oh, all right, we're going to enter. Okay, Dr. Dr. Greenlaw? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Dr. Greenlaw, this is Marty, okay. this is Marty Eichelberger. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I am here. I, how do I advance the slides? So I'm uh, ready to go. Mark, can we give him uh, rights? Uh, give us Davey, a, hit the little arrow down at the bottom left of the screen of, with your slide. I don't have the Yeah, sorry, Dave. Arrow. I'm giving you the rights. Just give us uh, one second. Use your okay. mouse. Okay, once the arrows show up, just go ahead. Okay, I got it. Now I'm there. Great. Thank you. This is uh, our hospital in uh, Northern California, and we're going to talk about how to cover the burn wound. So I'm going to talk about the simple principles of excision and grafting, the team preparation, um, how to do early excision and grafting, some of the techniques and some of the complications. So how you do with burns depends on what you start with. Now you gotta remember that our survival has really improved so that a, the size burn that gives you a 50% mortality in adolescence about 85% and it's still very good for children. Um, the elderly it's improving but it's still a problem. And you know the goal is to improve the function and the appearance of the patient. So it's not just survival; it's how they how they look with their with their appearance. So um, again, superficial wounds will heal. Your goal is to try to get them to heal without scarring. Um, the deep wounds you need to graft. Um, it depends on how much donor site you have available, and uh, we'll talk about all those principles. So if you look at Skin, the epidermis keeps the water in, so anything above the epidermis, which is at the top layer, is a first degree burn. It's dry um, because you still have that area that protects you from uh, um, water leaking out. Second degree burn or partial thickness is in to the dermis, and, but it has hair follicles, oil glands that allow for re epithelialization. And then once you get into the fat, it's third degree burn, and once you get into um, muscle, bone, or tendon is fourth degree burn. The care is varies on each one of those types of burns. Now the philosophy is you should do it right the first time. That'll improve the function, appearance, get them back to school quicker, uh, reduce their hospitalization, and reduce the need for reconstruction surgery. So this is a child sent to us whose hand was ignored, really bad scarring. This is about two months out. He has boutonniere deformities. That versus here, child who had early excision and grafting the cheek grafts, you can have a very nice result. Now, early excision and grafting, the philosophy within two to three days. The idea is that uh, you want to get rid of the burn before you get the angiogenesis, the inflammation, to reduce the scarring. And actually, studies have been Galveston shown that earlier excision and grafting reduces the blood loss because you don't have that ingrowth of blood vessels. So the key principle here is that if okay. Hey, David, we, we're having a problem here with a connection. David, could you just uh, hold on just a second here, 30 yeah. seconds? We just need some of this uh, video bandwidth to kind of catch up and let things get caught up. So give us just another couple of seconds, Rob, and we'll be back online with you. I think you're coming can you, up can, now. Some, can you hear us, David? Because we're going to need to take a break here to reboot this. Where the epithelium migrates across the surface of the viable tissue. David? Um, if David. Wound, yes, sir. David, can you hold on just a second? Yes. Uh, freeze where you are. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and take take a break so we can reboot the system because what's happening is uh, we're not getting your voice and the visual together. So give us a few seconds, okay, everybody. We'll, we'll come right back on as soon as we boot it back up.
Okay, so just stand by. Five minute break. My apologies. Well, the, philo the philosophy here for taking care of burns is to do it right the first time. You'll have improved function and appearance. An example here is a child who hasn't had his hand taken care of properly and has severe boutonniere deformities. However, if you do a graft appropriately, um, you can see you get a very nice result. Um, this is a bad hand here that you can see. Um, and the next one is a graft that uh, has been properly placed, nice sheet graft, functions much better. So we talk about early excision and grafting. Um, the concept here is that burns will um, stop the inflammation and you'll reduce the amount of bleeding if you do an early excision and grafting. So the idea to get the graft off or get the burn off earlier, you actually will have better better function in the long term. Now, one of the key principles, and again, it seems like we have a delay, but I'll just keep working through this, is that if you heal within two weeks, you don't scar. If you take longer than two weeks, um, you tend to have more scarring. Now, an example of this happening um, can be seen in the next picture, which is coming up here, that um, if a burn the lower part uh, where it's white has healed within 10 days and it doesn't scar. The area that took about 18 days up on the chest suffers significant hypertrophic scarring. So the idea then is if you can get a partial thickness burn to heal within two weeks, then you have improved outcome. Healing of the epithelium basically starts at the bottom cell of the epithelial layer and it marks across the viable surface. Now you can imagine that the epithelium, if you can go across a moist wound, will heal faster than if you allow it to dry and form that scab because that dry wound impairs epithelialization. Now the epithelium will only migrate across an area for um, about a centimeter before it poops out. But then where you have hair follicles, um, that allows the wound to heal. If there's lots of hair follicles, they tend to heal more rapidly um, because they're just closer together. When there's fewer hair follicles, you tend to have um, slower healing. So the idea then is to maintain a moist environment, prevent infection, and you can lose a, use a biologic dressing, which is a dressing that maintains a moist environment so allows for more rapid healing. Um, and if you still haven't healed within two weeks, then you want to go ahead and do uh, a skin graft. There's essentially two kinds of skin grafts. Um, one's called a split thickness skin graft, which uh, is through the middle of the dermis. And then there's a full thickness skin graft, which go all the way through um, the procedure, all the way through the skin down to uh, the live tissue. Now, it's important that you have preparation, um, that you have time out, you make sure you have a good area, you position the patient appropriately, um, you prep the torso, you warm the operating room until it's warm, and you can use sterile tourniquets. Now, don't forget about blood loss because you can have a huge blood loss, um, and one way to estimate blood loss is to uh, assume that you'll lose 2% of a blood volume per percent excision. So a 30% burn, you'll expect to lose 60% of a blood loss. For a face, that's 4.5%. So a 5% face excision will still cause about a 25% um, blood loss. Now, important principles are the thicker the graft, the less it contracts. So you want to have thicker grafts for areas like the face and hands. Um, and you do not need to allograft the wound before you put on a skin graft. And we'll talk about sheet grafts in the future, but sheet grafts eliminate that mesh pattern. This is an example of a hand on the left that has full thickness, doesn't contract, and on the right, you tend to have a split thickness skin graft, which shrinks and shrivels more. Now, one way to prepare the say, donor say, site to minimize David, bleeding. David, David, yes, sir. David, this is Marty uh, Eichelberger. Could you just realize that you're one slide ahead? It looks like there's a delay. Um, no, so, uh, David, just I'm, look at I'm the. Trying to, 
Look at the top left corner. The bottom left corner is what the audience is seeing. That's delayed always. So just ignore that. It's the top left corner what is what uh, you should be looking at. And I am. Okay. Right now it says graph donor and, uh, site. Th there's a delay on the bottom one. Of course. So I'm trying to hide it. No, no, ignore that. Ignore oh. that. That's fine. That's because that's okay. what the audience is seeing. That's different than, they're seeing everything delayed. So just ignore that. We can even take that away if it's confusing people. Just look at the top okay, left. Okay, fine. Okay, sorry. That's right. One way to prepare the donor site is to inject subcutaneous epinephrine. That will markedly reduce the blood loss, and you need a firm surface on top to uh, harvest areas that are difficult, like in the scalp or the back. Um, and choose a good site for a donor site. The back has thicker skin, has less scarring, and you want to actually hide the donor site. And I'll give you examples of that. Um, the dermatone, um, you can actually get a very wide dermatone. Um, there are other ones that you can get available. They're brown, the zimmer, most common. The pageant has a nice six-inch wide, which can minimize seams. So here's a picture of injecting the uh, subcutaneous epinephrine. Um, it really reduces blood loss to almost nothing when you harvest skin. And here is a leg you can see that you can actually hide um, that donor site down the thigh, and if you're wearing shorts, you can see it. So a better way to do it is you can actually harvest circumferentially, and if there is scarring, the shorts will cover it. Another example, a lower back on the patient you can put under the shorts. Um, again, the back has really nice area to get large pieces of skin, and it tends to uh, scar less, mainly because it's thicker skin. And this example is a common place for a full thickness. You can take it from the groin, um, where you have minimal scarring, and uh, almost no one except maybe a stripper, you would never see that kind of a wound. So when you do the graft, um, some people have fancy devices, but you can really make it simple. I tend to use just a simple razor blade in guards called the Goulin or Watson that allow you to excise the area. Um, and you go down to viable bleeding, uh, that's how deep you go, but if you use a tourniquet, you can, again, decrease the blood loss. And if you're going to do sheet grafts, you want to get rid of all of the dermis. Um, so here's an example of a simple Watson knife. We actually excise the burn all the way down to the tissue below the, the fat. And here's a device you can hold the hand up and you can put that sheet grass on very nicely. Um, and sheet grass, and what I mean by sheet grass is that it's, there's no meshing. So you don't have that mesh pattern. You have a better appearance. Um, it tends to work better. Um, you do have to worry about you have a bigger donor site and you have to worry about hematomas, but the scarring is much better. This is an example of a mesh graft. Doctors would say this looks good, but the patients hate it. You have that mesh pattern for life. An example of a sheet graft looks much more like normal skin. And you can even think about where you put your seams. Now, a seam is less like any incision. It causes tension. So you can actually design your seams to minimize scarring. You can either have it going horizontal instead of up, down, up the entire length of the arm, or you can actually create zigzags to re release the tension and minimize the scarring. It's just simply, you can see the zigzag in the skin graft just by overlapping the grafts. And on this back of the hand, you can see the curved line, minimal scarring, where the straight line tends to have more scarring. Here's an example of using a six inch wide patch of dermatone. You can put a nice sheet graft and have almost no seams on the back of the hand where the seams are crooked on the front, on the volar surface, and there's minimal scarring in the skin graft. So the topical care is we tend to use antimicrobials. You can use sulfamylin, which is um, maffinide acetate. We usually use nystatin with it. We can, you can use silver nitrate or Dakin, which is bleach, very diluted. We check the grafts on day one and five for sheet grafts. So you have to drain hematomas. Mash graft, we wait till day two. And we actually get people moving on day five and out of bed on day seven. Now, when you do face grafts, you have to be cognizant that uh, the skin below the clavicles is a different color than skin from above. So this girl's sheet graft on her forehead is darker because it was taken from the thigh. So if you can do a small face graft, 
you want to do take the skin from the scalp, which has a better color match. Now, if you have a whole face, you want to just basically minimize seams. And what we try to do is we can take a whole U-shaped piece of skin graft and wrap it around the whole face to minimize the seams. And you want to put any seam at the eyes, eye level, around the nose level. But any kind of minimization of the seam, you can have a very nice result. And again, here on the face, you can turn out with pretty good results by minimizing the seams. Another example of a face graft with wrapping around an entire U-shaped skin grafts can have a good result. Um, for the massive burns, you want to get rid of that source of inflammation. When you have a splinter, you pull the splinter out for the massive burns, you want to get the burn off within seven days. Cover them with as much of their own skin as you can, and when you're out of skin, use Allograft, um, and then reharvest when you can. The principle is cover the hands and face with sheets or minimal mesh, otherwise, other areas use wider mesh, um, and go forward from there. Example of a massive burn, we take them on day one or two, size the hands with their own skin, minimal mesh, wider mesh on the arm. This is allograft we place on the remaining areas, and then when the donor sites heal, you can, this is again allograft in the back, the donor sites heal, you reharvest. When it reharvests again for the face, here's an area that looks good. It's allograft. We excise it later on. So you've protected that wound from inflammation infection. And eventually this donor site, I mean, this back looks bad, but the allograft is being rejected, but it's two months out. And you have donor skin, and you can basically, you've healed the area 65 days later. And that's the philosophy for basically covering a massive burn. So the new concepts here is that burn care outcomes have improved. You need to re re-epithelialize the area faster for more optimal outcomes, reduce scarring. Be careful where you choose your donor sites. Thicker grafts for hands, joints, and faces. Sheet grafts if you can for smaller areas. Think about your seams to minimize scarring. And early incision and grafting is feasible and is what we tend to do nowadays. Dr. Greenwald, and that's it. Thank you very much.